What an incredible show we're about to have. Sleepers and values for fantasy football. Mike is back Hey-o! in the house. This is going to be awesome. If you're just joining us, want to make sure everyone knows the Ultimate Draft Kit is also out. It is up. It is for your use right now, and we have an app this year on both the Android store and the App Store. Go check it out, ultimatedraftkit.com. You will not be sad. Hi, this is Kyle from Lancaster, California, from the League of Fort Knox, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome back. Thank you. It's he good does, to be back. He does Scoo exist. to be back. School <laughs> to be back, America. Oh, we thought it would never happen. Honestly, there was a part of me that thought I was stuck. Like, I, I had moved. <laughs> I live here now. And the place that I live was actually the airport. <laughs> yeah, we did mention that on the show. Welcome back, Mike. Jason is here. The you ever seen that gang movie? Back together. Terminal. Yes, with, with Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. Yeah. I, look, I was almost that man. But but you know the difference between you and Tom Hanks, Mike? I mean, they're only. I'm they're, attractive. They're only a couple of. Take that, Tom Hanks. <laughs> Get ba- body. Back with a vengeance. Uh, you had your children at the airport as well. Tom yeah. Hanks didn't have to deal with none of that. Yeah, well, because honestly, if I didn't have to deal with the family and the children, I would have. I just would have stayed there. Yeah, airport life. It's great. Welcome back. Welcome to our sleeper and value early sleeper and value show today. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, YouTube.com slash the Fantasy Footballers, and the Instagram. Got the pictures flying on the Instagram. Videos, too. Brooks Brooks handles the gram. Uh, Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers. Handles the gram. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's what the kids say. There's a video up right now of you and Jason epic high-fiving. Oh, so there good. There was some epic shuffleboard that took place with Mike out of town. Um, Jason and I went on a uh, run. 11-game winning streak. Yeah, and there is a GIF now. Did you ever – is that where it's at? It's on Instagram, Brooks. Did you tweet that too? I did tweet that as well. Well, it's worth worth tweeting. <laughs> a reminder, <laughs> tomorrow we'll be in Chicago. Ballers Live. Live podcast tour begins in Chicago at Thalia yes. Hall. If you want tickets, ballerslive.com. We're, we'll be in New York the week after, then San Francisco, L.A., and Phoenix. BallersLive.com for tickets. Come hang out. Be part of a live show, live mailbag, live mailbag drop featuring you. Oh, yes. It'll be a lot of fun. All right. Let's get into it. Quick question of the day. Brooks is calling this Team ADP Pick'em. So we're going with the Vikings today. Which Vikings player are you most likely to draft at their current ADP, their current average draft position in a half point per reception league? Who are you most likely to draft? Dalvin Cook at 205. Adam Thielen at 301. Stephon Diggs at 401. Kirk Cousins right now going at uh, at 1209. Kyle Rudolph, 1312. Alexander Madison. I barely said his name properly. Because <laughs> you there. were going to sing it. Alexander Madison. <laughs> well, I got thrown off a little because he's actually ahead of Rudolph. 1307. Mm. Take your pick. Man. Look, this is this is like hard for me to do because for the last several years I have been Mr. Adam Thielen, especially when it comes to the Thielen versus Diggs. I'm on record saying this year I am Adam You wish Thielen. you were Mrs. Adam Thielen. I, I mean, you do. I do, and I still believe I can be <laughs> with a little bit more diet. You just got to believe and work out. I probably can get should there. shave the beard, but go um, on. You know the so the reality is, I thought that Stefan Diggs, like he's done the last several years, will by the time we get closer to the season, he'll overtake Adam Thielen in ADP, or they'll be back to back. But right now, if Stefan Diggs is a whole entire round after Adam Thielen. And you're talking about a guy who's going to be a top 24 wide receiver for sure, has the ability to be a top 12 wide receiver. In the fourth round, 
I think Diggs is probably the guy from the Vikings that I will personally end up with if the average draft position holds where it is right now. Uh, so the question was, which Vikings player are you most likely to draft at their ADP? When I looked at this list, Diggs was the one that jumped out as the best potential value. That being said, I'm most likely to draft Dalvin Cook. I've drafted him in several drafts. He's going at 205 in the second round, so I'm feeling very comfortable about that position. I think you're talking about a player that at the end of the season could have been worth a first-round pick that I get in the middle of the second round. So he's the most likely player for me to draft being a running back heavy type of, of drafter. So Mike, what about you? I, I was kind of surprised that this was your answer. Yeah. The, my answer of this list is the most likely is Alexander Madison. And I have, I have this weird FUD. I feel like a FUDster. I don't right now, even which, know what that is. FUD, you know, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Oh, it, Okay. And now it, I know it's most most commonly talked about when people are, you know, they're trying to spread misinformation about other companies and things like that. But I am just I I am I see the world where e all three of those top players are are literally weak winning or league winning type of players. Uh, Dalva Cook could easily skyrocket if he stays healthy. He was he's been amazing on the field. Adam Thielen's first half. Stephon Diggs still has that potential, but I also easily see the world where they all disappoint sure. at the exact same at the exact same time. And Alexander Madison was he was one of the rookie running backs that I was very interested in. He popped in my production model out of Boise State. He's not necessarily he he doesn't explode in any particular part of his game. He's just uh, to me a well rounded running back. And I think that opportunity is going to knock for him at some point. With like they've, they've already talked about him. They want him to be the Latavius Murray for this offense, which is, I mean, that's kind of the obvious thing right away for the Vikings to say. But they spent a third-round pick on the guy. They had a huge need at running back. Dalvin Cook is not the healthiest person <laughs> in football throughout his entire career. Would you – so when you say – I mean, in all likelihood, you're not actually drafting Madison. You're likely – I am, actually. Okay. Like, I've been in, in – I'm in the midst of many industry mocks, and I find myself grabbing Alexander Madison in the double-digit rounds and, and basically all of them. Does, does it feel like you're grabbing the equivalent value of, like, what Latavius was last year in Minnesota, yeah. but you're getting him for free? Yeah, basically. Okay. Um, makes sense. I mean, Cook, regardless of how good he is, there needs to be another piece to the puzzle. If you believe the team's going to run the ball more, it's not going to only be Cook. So uh, the draft capital says pay attention to Madison. All right. Um, Jason mentioned the ultimate draft kit. You should hop in and check out a brand new uh, video. Mr. Matthew Harmon Ooh. dropped a brand new introduction to the 2019 Reception Perception Project. A lot of people, look, you, you understand what rankings are and you understand the tiers and you understand these other components of the draft kit, but maybe you don't know the practical value of the Reception Perception data that's inside. Uh, it is proprietary to the Ultimate Draft Kit. It, it has been put together by Matt Harmon over a series of uh, several years of, of just Many moons. charting I think he says in the video, 50,000 routes at this point he has, he has viewed. So um, a lot of data and information, but he also clues you in on how to best use it to prepare for your fantasy football drafts. So check that out at ultimatedraftkit.com. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. Yeah, the footballers, we reached an agreement with Mike, the fantasy hitman, right, to bring him back into the fold after a long absence. He, um, This has all been a ruse. He wasn't trapped in any airport. He was holding yes. out. <laughs> His agent uh, reached out to us. Jay Grizz made a compelling proposal as well. Yeah, he, uh, the, the early reports are Jay Grizz is really unhappy that we brought Mike back, but, you know, the somebody people called wanted him, it. Somebody called him the depth chart assassin. Jay Grizz? Jay Grizz now. Oh, that's a throwback. There were rumors that he gave some phone calls to the, the airline is why. So, 
Um, this being that being said, Mike, when you left, it was Hat Week. Mm-hmm. You still got a hat on. Well, now, here's the have thing: Have you found somebody to cut your hair yet? <laughs> here's the thing: Because this is no, there's no way. Because look, I wouldn't. I was on vacation. That's true. I'm not gonna spend my vacation time getting a haircut, and then I was trapped on vacation, and now we have this live show for. I, I'm I am in a quite a pickle. There's a no, <laughs> if you come out on the Chicago Live Show with a hat, I will be very entertained. I, so. I hope he comes out bald. I hope he oh. just, Chicago Live Show. I'm he, going ten gallon. I want to see a ten gallon on, on the I live show. Literally, have was talking to my wife about this of like what when you're complaining about all the problems. Like I'm trapped. I'm like, I got this show Friday. I got a, my stupid hair. I got to figure <laughs> out. This is a problem. So Chicago, get ready for. Uh, hat live show. Hat live show. <laughs> All right, ESPN. Uh, there's been some talk, uh, not just about Michael Thomas, but also about Julio Jones and the contract situations for both players. The Saints coming out and saying, "Hey, they're willing to make Michael Thomas the highest played wide wide receiver in the game." Talk about Julio Jones's contract and optimism that it gets done before camp. There's been talk of AJ Green's contract. So let me just throw this out there for fantasy owners. In all three of those circumstances. How does the contract situation translate to how you view view these players for fantasy, specifically Michael Thomas, Julio Jones, and A.J. Green? Michael Thomas, it's irrelevant to me. He's young. Agreed. He's going to get paid. There's no, no question. A.J. Green and Julio, on the other hand, I'm much more – I'm, I'm anticipating these contracts and these signings, and they're going to make an impact for Dynasty – I, I think of the three, it's definitely AJ Green yep. that's the most worrisome. He's got, you know, he's older for a wide receiver. He's got uh, toe problems, and this are is, you describing Julio Jones or are you describing AJ Green? I could be describing. Because I think those are the same exact. I could be describing either, but I'm describing the one who missed several games last year and is in a tumultuous situation with a franchise that is changing, head coach changing. Who knows how long Andy Dalton will be the quarterback? They are. They very well, halfway through this season, could say, we're in rebuild. We're in, we've got to rebuild. You know, we've got some some pieces in Joe Mixon. We've got our new head coach that we like, but we're going to blow this thing up. So That's not good for AJ Green. Exactly. If he gets a long-term contract signed before the start of this year, his dynasty outlook is much better. I agree. And Julio's still got two years left on his contract. I'm actually a little surprised that there's – so much hullabaloo going on with Julio right now. Um, he's not in the same boat as Green. No, Green's in a contract year. Julio is signed through 2020. But he wants more money. Yeah, well, we all want more money, am I right? America. Yeah. yeah. Hey, guess what? What? The chin. The chin has retired. Mm. Oh, man. I just, This news broke, came through on Sleeper while Jason and I were enjoying uh, uh, some lunch. And Josh McCown... Retired after 17 seasons, played for 10 different teams. He was the first quarterback I ever saw play football live. That tells you how long he's been in the league. He was the Cardinals quarterback in 2002. Uh, he has uh, one of the greatest chins in history. Sure. Um, Both In literal, more ways than one. <laughs> yes, literal and figurative. Yeah, in the, in the boxer sense. He, he can take a hit. Yeah. He, his career is so bizarre. And just improbable of, you know, it drafted to be maybe a starter and had to start with when the Arizona Cardinals were an absolute dumpster heap of a team. They like they were the laughing stock. Then kind of was a journeyman. Took a took a year off. The Chicago I don't know if you guys remember the Chicago Resting Bears. The, chin. the Bears had to lure him out of retirement. And that was he, like eight years before. <laughs> and that was the huge yeah. resurgence when he was in Chicago and uh, like he was a fantasy waiver stud. He has a very similar on the field situation as I view Ryan Fitzpatrick, which is, you know, no no more competent backup in the last ten years than Josh McCown or Ryan Fitzpatrick. When they're on the field, you're kind of you're like, oh, maybe that's even good for their receivers right. as opposed to bad. You know, when the starter goes out. So, uh, congrats on a wonderful career. Yes. Well respected player. And uh, he joins ESPN as an analyst. A uh, couple bits of hype news. Let's start in Pittsburgh. Uh, report yes. out of uh, The oh, Athletic. This is the best hype train of all time, guys. Well, I the Pittsburgh one? Just both of these comments. Well, Dante 
Moncrief, uh, slapping the bass. Do you buy it? Moncrief. They say a slam dunk that he's the number two wide receiver. Looks in like Pittsburgh. a slam dunk. Looks like two. a slam dunk. Do you believe he's a slam dunk, Mike? He absolutely looks like it. We're actually going to be talking about Dante Moncrief later in this show. Oh, well, let's table that then. Yes. Let's, let's talk choose. about something a little bit bigger. Even better. Even better. Now, let's it, go. It makes perfect sense that Mike yes. would be even more excited about this player than anybody else, and we'll get to that. But, uh, you know, some some hype about Mo Alley Cox. Now, we call him Gigantor. We call because him Gigantor on this show. He's gigantic. If you don't know who Mo Ali Cox is, don't feel bad. <laughs> because I would be shocked if you really were paying attention to him. He 6'5. I didn't know who he was until 67. Until last year preseason. I'm watching the Colts, and then there is a man who is standing literally three heads above everyone else on the team. I go, who is that guy? He is enormous. And then you find out, oh, he plays tight end. He plays one of the, quote, skill positions. He's enormous. And the 6'5", 265. Oh, get out of here. That's, yeah. that's garbage. Yeah, He's, right. He is 7'8". Seven, eight. Eight. He is 7 feet, 8 inches tall. At least. 600 pounds. Yes. Runs runs a 4'140". I mean, when, oh, there's, Allie Cox. when there are 22 NFL players on the field, several of them are 6'5". The yes. old lineman. You got, you got a bunch... And then there's this one guy that walks on that's like, he's hey, actually, little guys. it's been confirmed he's one of the Monstars. <laughs> uh, but Mo Ali Cox <laughs> predicting a breakout season. Now, see, we, here's what we know about Andrew Luck when we bring it back to fantasy um, and Mo Ali Cox's giant head. Easy to target. But he's, he's going to be a red zone threat. He did score a couple times last year. Andrew Luck is, has no qualms about throwing. Uh, a large quantity of touchdowns to the tight end position. Wiley Cox, Jack Doyle, Eric Ebron will all see time on the field. It's not good news for Ebron. That's more – you're not looking at Wiley Cox as a fantasy threat. You're looking at him as a, an addition for Andrew Luck and as a threat to Eric Ebron and Jack Doyle's production at the position, right? Right. And to be fair, neither Jack Doyle or Eric Ebron, they're not practicing right now. The reason why Mo Wiley Cox looks so awesome – is because he's the starting tight end for that team, as as it lays right now, and he's he's humongous. <laughs> he's, he's Guys, I can't stress this. He's so big. He, I mean, if you're, we we can't say it enough. He's gigantic. <laughs> now picture Mike's head, which in and of its own right is also humongous. Is renowned as being a larger yes. than average head. If we look when we I'm take gifted cranially, when we get pictures, it doesn't matter if Mike's standing in the front or the back. He's his in the head's foreground. the biggest of us. Now double that. Yes, and that's my yeah. Cox's head. No, that's the size of his hand. <laughs> <laughs> that was today's news and notes. A reminder: Sleeper does not just break the latest fantasy news. They are also the best fantasy platform. As simple or as complex as you need your league to be, it is flexible. Download the Sleeper app today. They're doing the tiered PPR. I don't know if, if you follow me on Twitter. Uh, a few months ago, we had talked to them. Someone had brought up uh, this interest, very interesting system for, for tiering the actual value of a reception. And it was just like, this is a really cool idea. So I was talking with this person, retweeting their idea, and Sleeper said, hey, we can do that. And, so and then they did. And then they did. It's going to be an incredible experiment. Hey, before we move to the early sleepers, want to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped, the number one in men's below-the-belt grooming. Look, whoa, look, fellas. Sensitive area. You got to keep it tight. You got to keep it right. And that means you got to groom yourself. And you go. You want to groom with the absolute number one. You use Manscaped. Like Andy said, it's a sensitive area. If uh, if if you've been taking care of yourself, which I hope you have, we've all experienced the ah! the injuries, ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> the injuries that can come from using an inferior product. Who am I kidding? It's more like ah! yes, it's it's not a pleasant situation when the injury occurs, and that's why they're lawnmower 2.0. They have the proprietary skin safe technology. This trimmer won't nick or snag. Accidents are finally a thing of the past. And look, you don't want to use the same trimmer you use for your face. Uh -huh. Absolutely. They, and they got it. 
an anti-chafing deodorant and moisturizer for this sensitive area as well. You got to use the right tool and Manscaped is the way to be. And right now you can get 20% off plus free shipping and a free travel bag with the code footballers at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code footballers. Clean yourself up. Yeah, also, a uh, quick reminder before we jump into sleepers to check out fantasychamps.com. Our friends at Fantasy Champ, the best fantasy football trophies, fantasy yeah. football rings, draft boards, awards, plaques, whatever you need. Use the code BALLERS at fantasychamps.com. They'll get you taken care of. Let's talk sleepers. Sleepers. I forgot about that one. Ah! Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Well, we come from the land of the ice and snow, Andy. Yes, yes. Uh, if you look up on our wall, that's a that's a vintage <laughs> sleeper up there. We've got T.O. on the wall doing his famous sleeper touchdown Nicely celebration. Nicely production team. He just didn't – now they let you celebrate again. I mean, T.O. was the reason they stopped it, him and uh, Ocho Cinco. And then, and then they brought it back. He, he's coming yeah, out but, of retirement. But now they do team celebrations. Do you think Ocho Cinco and Terrell Owens would be they, about they, the they team were known celebration? As, they were known as team players, Mike. That was what they were <laughs> renowned for. Sure. All right, we're into. Uh, we're each going to pick an early sleeper, defend uh, or make the case for that player, and then we'll give an early value as well. Uh, do we have volunteers? Who wants to go first here? I'll jump in here. Uh, my early sleeper, I want to highlight this player. That is the bird alert himself, Albert Wilson. He is a reception perception superstar, has been for quite some time. And he is. There might be people right now saying, who does he play for, Mike? <laughs> so Albert Wilson plays for the Miami Dolphins. Uh, he had, he kind of came up in the league for the Chiefs, got a, you know, not, not a huge contract, but for a player of his caliber, got a nice contract to come in for Miami. He did suffer a, a pretty major injury last year where people were, were thinking, I, we don't even know if he's going to return to football. But all signs point to him being 100% uh, on track to start the season. And I want to highlight a few things for Albert, well, Albert Wilson, his opportunity. Miami cleaned house. They brought in an entirely new regime. Yes, maybe they're trusting the process, but they did not draft a single wide receiver. And this could definitely be a team you look at and say, well, that team seemed like they needed to invest some capital in a wide receiver. They were able to bring back Devontae Parker at a bargain deal for him. And it's it's Kenny Stills, Albert Wilson, and Devontae Parker. Those are the big three guys. He has 4-4 four, four speed. If you saw him last year, he had a game where he absolutely went Hamburglar. Just huge, three huge plays in this game. In reception perception, like I talked about, he scores in the 98th percentile of success versus zone. So if you try and put a zone defender on Albert Wilson, you're done. You are absolutely toast. He is going to make you pay. He excels in the short and intermediate intermediate game like a player, Julian Edelman. Why do I highlight that? Because of the new regime in Miami. They are trying to make South Beach into South New England because they mm. brought in – they just said, New England, send us your coaches – uh, with Brian Flores as their head coach. He's a defensive guy. That means the offense is going up to Chad O'Shea, who spent the last 10 years as the wide receiver coach for the New England Patriots. It, it, someone is going to, this is my belief, they are going to do their best to turn someone into a Julian Edelman style of player. Get they, they, Chad O'Shea has already said he's bringing that offense down, the quick timing routes, and I don't think there's a better player fit on this team then Albert Wilson, who fits that scheme. Yeah, no more Danny Amendola uh, right. threat. The thing about Wilson that is the complete distraction, because I think the hype train would be through the roof on Wilson if you had his first half of the year of last year and you could put the injury out of your mind. Yes. The injury is the thing that, you know, the injury with how we're projecting the offense are the two points of pause for me. Absolutely. On excitement for Wilson. He'll probably, according to Matthew Betts in our Ultimate Draft Kit, says Wilson will probably be limited – through the entire offseason program. So will I ever have the guts to buy in, Mike? You think we should? That, yeah. That is the that is the tough thing. A lot of times, serious injuries, they take longer. You know, it's like, okay, 
however long it takes to be truly and it was, recovered. It is, was a hip injury. So if, if you were out there, you don't know what happened. He he was suffered a hip injury. Sure, and and it's one of those things where it's like, look, the NFL season starts when it starts. It doesn't give thought to your injury recovery, and that leads it's into, very rude. It is, it is super rude. Uh, that leads into my sleeper because my sleeper was a guy who got a devastating injury, uh, torn Achilles for Deonta Foreman when he was looking, starting to look awesome his rookie year, and that torn Achilles was, cost, on, a, was on a massive touchdown play. Yes, it was. He had an awesome, I believe it was a touchdown reception, yes. broke away uh, against Arizona. Yep. And uh, into the end zone he fell <laughs> with one Achilles it's attached true. to his body. It, and it was one a rough run. injury. Um, it was, and it was sad. And you know, the, the thing is about that injury is it's it's tough to come back from. You, especially for running backs, uh, we we have rarely seen running backs because there's a a couple things that have to happen. You have to be young enough to where teams still want you. You have to be given an enormous timeline, which most of the time running backs don't. They just don't get that opportunity. Well, Deonta Foreman has the opportunity. He basically missed all of last year. He did get back. Last season, he was in the playoffs. I think he only had like three carries for negative 10 yards or something <laughs> so like that. So you're going to highlight like, his, his Sure. Life. I mean, he, but <laughs> he wasn't there last year. That last year was him getting right. But look what the, the Houston Texans have done, right? I mean, they improved their offensive line, or at least they hope to have, um, uh, in, in, I believe, small ways. They lost Alfred Blue. They did not bring in other running backs it is Lamar Miller and Deonta Foreman and ESPN recently wrote up an article about all 32 teams who was the camp star who was the the surprising breakout player of each team's camp and for the Houston Texans it was Deonta Foreman who everybody says looks amazing Bill O'Brien has been talking him up and you have to go back to 2017 to remember what was happening 2017 Deonta Foreman's rookie year, they started getting him more and more involved, getting him games with double-digit carries. All of a sudden, Lamar Miller looked like he was – his job was yes. in jeopardy. Yeah. And then he tore his Achilles, and, and it, Lamar Miller had the entire backfield last year and was the guy. Nobody's been excited about Lamar Miller. Lamar Miller, he, he, he on his own, he provides a value for where he's being drafted if he's the guy. But the reason why I believe in Deonta Foreman as a sleeper is because – He's one of the rare guys that I don't believe it requires an injury in front of him for him to actually come into fantasy relevance. He could win the job. He's truly 100% healthy. He's had like a almost two-year recovery timeline. He's young. And if you don't remember Deonta Foreman from when he was drafted in 2017, I loved him. Um, you know, I, I loved his tape. He had incredible co college production. Uh, Kevin Cole, a great uh, fantasy mind back in the day, was working for Rotoviz, had this great running back model, projection model that was really, I mean, it, it was very accurate. It had a, just a, a great historical um, success rate. And Deonta Foreman in that model was the number one running back ahead of uh, Leonard Fournette, Joe Mixon, Christian McCaffrey, Marlon Mack, Aaron Jones, that, that group. Those guys scored well. So my point is, he's talented. He's got the opportunity, I believe. And it reminds so, me a little bit of the Dalvin Cook situation where Combine wasn't as friendly to him, but what you saw in tape and what we saw in the field before the injury was pretty impressive. Sure, but he's he's not a pass catcher, though. Well, I mean, he was not a pass catcher in college at all. 100% you're right. For some reason, the Texans have talked him up as a good pass catcher. Bill O'Brien has said – that he's mm. a good pass catcher, but I mean, we've seen, we've heard that with, you know, Jordan Howard and yeah. things like that. So, um, take it for what you will. I that is a that is definitely a question mark. But he's a guy that's going uh, super late or virtually undrafted. Tenth and round, Deonta Foreman, tenth but, round right now. Lamar Miller is going it, in the sixth. And in a dynasty league, look, I know some people maybe they draft him, they held on because they're they super believe in him, and you're not going to pry him away. Some people are like, I don't care about this right. backup who. Got negative yards last year. See if you can buy him cheap. I mean, I'm I'm with you that it's when you can get a running back in the in the double digit rounds who has the potential to usurp the 
the the quote starter, like Deontay Foreman. It's a wonderful. He's going to be on a he's going to be on a high powered offense. The Texans are going to score a lot of points as long as Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins are on the field. If if Watt or if uh, if Foreman can steal even just the goal line role, I mean you have an, a great backup running back. Yeah, and the definition that we give for a sleeper is a player who is either not drafted or is drafted very late that are primed to emerge as a contributor, as an impact player, as somebody that can excel due to these reasons you brought up, increased opportunity or the scheme change or the circumstance. You're talking about a player that is not hyped, is drafted much later in drafts. Mike, you just mentioned players that have the chance, the opportunity, the percentage chance to usurp these are it's a perfect transition because I was deciding between Curtis Samuel, I was deciding between him and Kalen Balage for yeah, my Bellage sleeper pick. Yeah, Balage is very similar. And Balage is in that boat. I mean, Kalen Balage is a late thirteenth round pick. Kenyon Drake is a fifth round pick. I have them projected for the same amount of carries this year. So that's my honorable mention of Kalen Balage, and we'll talk more about him over the course of the off season. It's not to say he's going to do it, but there are only a certain number of players. It's why I like, uh, you know, we'll talk about Royce Freeman in a little while. Same reason. Yeah, I'll, just to sneak in here, like I do not believe in Kalen Balaj. I, I don't think he's a good enough running back, doesn't have the moves, and I do believe in Kenyon Drake, 100%. So, like, I'm, I'm on the other side. But I still recognize the value that Kalen Balaj is in the draft because I could be wrong. It doesn't even matter. Maybe I could be right, and the coaches, they want Balaj or they, they give him the opportunity. I completely agree with the with the idea that Kalen Balaj is in a perfect situation to be able to be a great sleeper, uh, have the opportunity, and and I could just be wrong on the evaluation um, side. Well, and keep in mind, Kenyon Drake believes he's a lizard person. No, no, he's no, no, he doesn't. Oh, he's no Sammy Watkins. <laughs> but I could have got you to take him right out of your breakout list. Um, no, I'm going to go with Curtis Samuel. Curtis yes. Samuel is is one of my favorite sleeper picks. This is a former second-round draft pick, and I think what's interesting to look at is over the second half of last year, you know, the hype is there for D.J. Moore, right? D.J. Moore uh, is currently a sixth-round draft pick in fantasy drafts, and for good reason. D.J. Moore's a very talented player, high draft capital. First-round pick. First-round pick. But Samuel was a second-round pick, and over the back half of last year, by the way, you can get Curtis Samuel in the 11th round right now, and I don't think that's going to change. I really don't. They had equal targets last year over the second half, 57 targets, 58 targets, receptions, 33 to 37. Curtis Samuel scored four touchdowns to DJ Moore's one. Uh, similar receiving yardage, DJ Moore outpaced him a little bit. Fantasy points, Curtis Samuel was better. So when you look at that comparison, what you see on film, Curtis Samuel, uh, he passes all the tests, reception perception-wise, very talented player, very good route runner. People look at him as the gadget guy. No, he's a great route runner. Huge opportunity, right, in Carolina for these guys to both emerge. I'll take the 11th round pick, the sleeper that showed out on the field versus the 6th round pick if I have to flip that coin. I think that both guys have the chance to do well, but one of them's free for me. So that guy's Curtis Samuel. I think he's a great sleeper pick. I think he's got a great opportunity, and I love identifying that what I'll call right here the cheaper guess, okay? Give me the cheaper guess in Kalen Belange. Give me the cheaper guess in Curtis Samuel. So that's that's my sleeper pick. Any thoughts on Curtis? I, I love the pick of Curtis Samuel, one being a sleeper. I will say I, I do believe his ADP will rise. Uh, those industry mocks I was talking about, I know an industry – Mock versus a home league, these are very, very different things. But he basically averages out to be a mid-eighth round pick. So it people are going to start picking up. They're going to get the fumes, the whiffs of the hype train for Curtis Samuel. It so I, I think he ends up in the single-digit rounds before August really gets going. If we have anything to say about it, that will probably <laughs> be the case. Yeah, it is telling, though, that in the industry mocks, the people that you know do this for a living, they're much higher than the average draft price on Curtis Samuel that alone is telling that they see something there you know talent and opportunity that that has the potential to break out and we have to remember too before we get into the values and, and we talked about this a little in the office today with the Belange Kenyon Drake situation there are so many factors in decision making here it's not like the Carolina Panthers they they don't sit back and they go man we're gonna give DJ Moore 
Uh, we're going to give him 30% more opportunity this year because we spent a first-round pick right, on him last right. year. And two years ago, Samuel was a second round. That's not how you think. You're out there to win games. You're out there to produce. They don't care about your fantasy team. They don't. They don't care if DJ Moore is going higher in your draft, and they don't care if you know if a team does view Kenyon Drake as a player who can't carry a high workload. They don't care about the efficiency numbers if that's the perception of the team. Now, we don't know that to be the case with Bellage and Drake, and Drake is a hyper-talented player, but we just have to remember they're not they're not looking through the same lens that we're looking through. So Stupids. I know. Let's get into the values. Values. The energy is it's high, Mike. Look, those those are some uh some fire drops, fellas. All right, let's talk about some early value picks. Each of us selected one guy. Why don't you kick it off, Jason? Because yeah, it's a, a perfect little transition here. Yeah, nice segue because Curtis Samuel, uh, I you know, he does have talent coming into another year in the system. DJ Moore, he's got talent coming into another year of the system. I think the wide receiving core for the Carolina Panthers, they've got Greg Olson back. They've got those two wide receivers. They've got Christian McCaffrey. Decent. Cam Newton is an incredible value right now. It, it, he he ended the year injured, obviously had the surgery on his shoulder in the offseason, and his last two games were basically he he couldn't throw the ball more than 10 yards. They were taking him out on plays when they had to throw it deep. It was unbelievable. And look, I'm I'm scooting. I'm scooting that booty. Oh. I'm scooting that. Oh. Here's the reality. Cam Newton is one of the best fantasy football players or, or quarterbacks of all time. He never it doesn't produce when he's on the field. Now, you can worry about injuries, right? In, in his career, when he plays 16 games, he has been a top four quarterback. The, the lowest he's been in a 16-game season is quarterback four. That's pretty doggone good. And he's right now being drafted as the 10th quarterback in the ninth round. I'm usually a double-digit quarterback drafter. Right, I wait till the tenth round and then I start looking. This year in the ninth round, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be looking for Cam because it's the shoulder sale. Yes, you get a discount. You're getting a discount on the shoulder <laughs> sale, and I don't care about. Can the I injury. interest you in a I, man with only one shoulder? I don't care at all about the injury or the injury risk that Cam presents. When when I get my quarterback in the ninth or tenth, let's say he re-injures it and he's out, whatever, I'll pivot. I expect that there's a good chance when I draft my ninth or tenth round quarterback. You don't scoot your, the position. You don't scoot your booty with your shoulder. But here's the thing. That's true. No. He's had this surgery before and came off of it for a career year and was amazing. What I care about is on a week by week basis, is this a guy that's going to dominate? And if you look at what he was doing last year before the shoulder injury, he was dominating. Eight of his first eleven games, if you go through, you know, week twelve where you know every team's had their bye week, he's he had eight games as a top 10 quarterback. Do you want to know who else had eight games as a top 10 quarterback? The list is Pat Mahomes, Cam Newton, and no one else. Not Matt Ryan, who was great. Not Jared Goff, who had that incredible first half of the year. Not Breeze, not Deshaun Watson or Aaron Rodgers or Andrew Luck. None of them had that kind of a rate, a percentage of their games played in the top 10 at quarterback. Cam Newton is a huge value in you know near double digit rounds and he's already past the shoulder surgery he's already throwing full in mini camps and you know so he's going to go and have a full training camp full preseason i am all about cam newton this year i feel like last offseason we spent a lot of time or i i tried to spend a lot of time telling you he was going to run and he's not going to stop running the the case with cam newton is always Eventually that will happen, right? Eventually some year something will happen where Cam Newton's not going to do it for in, you know, an infinite amount of time. But thus far, you're right. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. When he plays, he's great. When he doesn't play, doesn't put up numbers, unfortunately. But when he plays, he's been great. And um, I think he's going to stay at a discount. There are too many other fantasy quarterbacks with uh, glisten and gleam coming off of them. The Baker Mayfields, yep. uh, the Carson Wentz's, um, not to say that he should necessarily go ahead of those guys, but because there's so many that are interesting, right? Even You're guys like Matt Ryan, who finished number two last year, 
definitely going ahead of Cam in this year's startup. Yeah, you don't just have players like Drew Brees or they ha you know Tom Brady sitting ahead of him in drafts. There's a lot of very young, attractive other options, so it makes him a value. I doubt he changes much before uh, in, in fantasy drafts. Sure. Um, I'll jump in. It's Royce Freeman. Royce Freeman is my early value pick, and it would have given me nothing but joy to maintain – my full Philip Lindsay fandom on into the off season. Loved him last year. Picked him up in every league. Enjoyed every moment of owning Philip Lindsay, except well, for the every very, moment. very end of the season. But you got to stay water in fantasy. You've got to rotate your viewpoint. And this is another situation like Bellage and Drake, where Royce Freeman, Royce Freeman is a high draft capital guy. Mike spent much of the off season talking up Royce Freeman. Last Stupid year, Philip Lindsay. I'm, I'm pretty sure he was a my guy for you last yes, year. Yes, he was. And the thing is, is the season didn't go the way we expected for Royce Freeman, but it wasn't all Royce Freeman's fault. He battled through injury throughout this season, and Philip Lindsay was great. He showed up, he showed out, he stole carries. But this is not the, the offense in Denver is going to be balanced between these players because Royce Freeman is good, and that's why. Royce Freeman still averaged four a carry in a season when he battled injuries. He is a patient runner. He breaks tackles uh, in a way that, you know, Philip Lindsay is evasive. Royce Freeman is violent. Royce Freeman He's is, very strong. And he faced eight in the box 36% of the time last year. And you saw it. It was weird because when he got on the field, he just didn't face the, the opposing front that Philip Lindsay faced last year. He's an eighth-round pick. And take this for what you will, but he's a fluid pass catcher. He is a flexible pass catcher. Cecil Lammy, who's based out of Denver, he's a, a, a very uh, well-respected fantasy name for years, but he especially knows the Denver, you know, he's on the Denver beat. Says he looks amazingly fluid as a receiver in camp. There's just some things that lined up against Royce Freeman last year. I believe that this offense, which... Look, there's renovation happening in Denver. And I think Philip Lindsay is a great and talented player, but Royce Freeman is the one that I would say, if I had to bet on one putting up double-digit touchdowns in the offense, like who's got the best odds of doing that? It's Royce Freeman. It's not hmm. Philip Lindsay to me. So as a value in the draft, I think you get guaranteed production with the Royce Freeman draft pick in the eighth round. All right, I'm jumping in here. We alluded to it at the beginning. And the reason he hasn't been talked about in the past few shows is because I was gone and I didn't have a chance to spread my love yet again for Dante Moncrief. Moncrief. Mon <laughs> Look, Moncrief has had a very interesting career. He was a pretty high draft capital guy because he's an absolute physical freak. 6'2", 220, runs a 4'4". Those guys... They don't grow on trees. Makes as, very impressive Instagram videos. Is has great at the combine. Has, has a top three touchdown celebration oh, in the league. Slapping the base right now. And the problem with Moncrief is he has inflicted several fantasy wounds upon the community. He looked like he was absolutely poised for a breakout situation in Indianapolis when his sophomore year he put up. Uh, he, he had over 100 targets, 64 receptions, over 700 yards, and six touchdowns. Then the next year, he was the app, he was the touchdown machine. If you were playing fantasy in 2016, you knew that if there was a week of football and the Colts were playing, that meant that Dante Moncrief was going to catch a touchdown. That's just what happened. But then he got hit by the injury bug. And then he got hit by it again the next year to a point where if you're, if you're, you're the Colts, and you have this wide receiver who you, you think there's potential, but half of his career with you, he's just been injury plagued. You're not going to give him money. You're not going to re sign him. You're going to move on. That's just what happens. Then he ended, it looked like he had a death sentence for his career because he ended up in Jacksonville with Blake Bortles, where he was still able to have not a great fantasy year, but a reasonably productive year as a receiver given his circumstances. Now, Slightly he's, better circumstances. He's landed in, in what I would say, the best, the best situation that as a free agent he possibly could have landed in. He's in the Pittsburgh Steelers' offense. The Pittsburgh Steelers traded away 
their best wide receiver. He's in a giant target hole. The best wide receiver. Yeah, the, yeah, the best wide receiver. He's got Big Ben. I would dare to say that is a huge upgrade over Blake Bortles. And even last year with Blake Bortles, when things were rough, he was still able to average about 14 yards per reception. He's still a big play guy. Big play guy. He's still an elite red zone option. And I look the fr I'll give credit to Matt Harmon because this is the first. That was the first place I heard the the term coined of talking about the off season drum beat of a player. And that's what you need to follow. It starts to the news starts to build. It seems like fluff pieces. It seems like hype, but it just continues to build upon itself. And I believe that's what's happening right now for Dante Moncrief. I mean, people want James Washington to be the number two guy for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He graded out as one of the absolute worst wide receivers in pro football focus, the, the way that they chart guys. And so this is this is an open job. This is no one is locked in as the number two guy. And Moncrief is going in double digit rounds, absolutely free. Well, that that part I like a lot, but I don't want to hear what you're not saying. It's not that Moncrief is stepping in to become, Great. you know, a, a, a massive volume target no, no, player. It, it's that there's opportunity, and we I think we talked about this last week, Jason, where it's like, okay, is it Moncrief? Is it Deontay Johnson? Is it James Washington? I think it's all of them. I think that's the truth. You don't. Replace Antonio Brown with one player. You probably oh, don't yeah. replace him He's, with two players. Please do not. Hear that. I think that Moncrief is replacing Antonio Brown. I, I think the but hope what, is what that he's replacing like? Martavis Bryant. Sure. The hope is that that role where yes. Martavis Bryant was running nines along the sideline and was pretty darn valuable for fantasy when he was a Pittsburgh Steeler, that Dante Moncrief can establish himself as a go-to deep threat guy. But I worry about him being the Fulton Reed of the NFL next year where it's one in every five games, I'm like, yeah, baby. It and certainly then, could be. And then it rotates to somebody else. It, right. it absolutely could be. The, the thing is, I'm just – I am willing to take the chance that I get the number two wide receiver for Pittsburgh. In historically speaking, before Juju, it was really just one wide receiver would be – would put up elite production for Big Ben. So I'm not saying that I think Moncrief is coming in and he's turning into a top 15 wide receiver. But to get a guy who – if he is the number two guy for for Big Ben, I think it's pretty locked and loaded that he's a top thirty six uh, ranked wide receiver. And to get him in the the later rounds when you know that he can absolutely just explode and win you a week every five games, then uh, yeah, I'm taking the very, shot. Very very interesting. I think in three wide receiver leagues as well, and as a flex rotational type of option with upside. And I I, I would throw in best ball leagues. Best of ball leagues are oh, yes. going to get those deep bomb touchdowns you don't have to make the decision as to when to start him when he's gonna because I I have a feeling it's gonna be you know hot and cold he, he's not gonna have the volume that says when he doesn't have a big game he still has an okay game it's probably gonna be big game or bust is it a one-year deal again it's a two-year deal okay it's a two-year deal. He's only 25. Thought maybe he'd make the rotation, try to play with every quarterback in football <laughs> each year. <laughs> he, he absolutely could, but he's got a huge, huge opportunity How this year. How old is he? 25. Yeah, he, he's, a, he's a good value. Very interesting. It's tough for rookie wide receivers to come in. Everybody likes Deontay Johnson. I like Deontay Johnson. Takes time. Long term, I'm interested in Johnson, but I, I'm not drafting. Deontay Johnson in any form of redraft this year. Rookie wide receivers, also historically, before Juju, like rookie guys just don't do anything under Mike Tomlin. Yeah, yeah, they, it's it's a uphill battle to do that. All right, let's jump in. Pristine deal of the day. Well, that's perfect. Uh, Antonio Brown just talked about the gaping hole, all the targets left over in Pittsburgh, and Antonio Brown signed Oakland Raiders jersey yesterday at pristineauction.com. JSA witnessed. That's pretty cool. $74. They already got him? The, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, like, if I'm a Raiders fan, and, I, you know, I would love an Oakland Raiders signed Antonio Brown jersey, and those can't be too common because they can only have been signed in the last few months. So I doubt he was going around signing Raiders jerseys. <laughs> beforehand? <laughs> yes. Um, PristineAuction.com uses the registration code BALLERS, and you get 5 bucks towards your first autographed purchase. Hundreds of daily auctions. Definitely check them out. Make sure you use the code BALLERS. Any parting words, gentlemen? Mike, any um, lessons learned on your, your long and illustrious <laughs> vacation? Uh, look, there is an airline that shall not be named. Uh, but I learned that it's good to be here. 
I love I love <laughs> to, be, to be I love to be on this podcast. Thank you for uh, we missed you for all the for all the kind words on the social media. All right, that is it for Clan Chicago. We'll see you in a few hours. Yep, let's do it. Ballerslive.com. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.